Um, the Americans, says one of them, they don't really actively support. Well, maybe they do. But he says the, the, the principal thing is the U.S. is so slow that people believe they are supporting Daesh. And what does that mean? That is the essence of the Allen phony war appeasement of terrorism. So the U.S. has run some strikes, but it hasn't added up. Oh, Colonel Steve Warren, the resident provocateur there, says, this is beyond ridiculous. There's clearly no one in the West who buys it. Well, stop right there, Colonel. I'm in the West and I buy it. So that's baloney. It's beyond ridiculous, says Colonel Steve Warren, the spokesman of the U.S. operation in Iraq. There's no one in the West who buys it. But unfortunately, there's something that a segment of the Iraqi population believes. Uh, and now they say this is the Iranian propaganda machine, the Iranians and the Iranian-backed Shia militias. Well, I'm sorry. I see the Jarablus corridor open. You could interdict it. You haven't done it. The tax Wall Street Party begs to differ with Colonel Stevens. We'd be happy to debate him because we have evidence. It's not crazy. The other, uh, the other explanation offered in this article is that um, the Iraqis are racist because they hate the U.S. Right? They have uh, resentments about what the U.S. did to them, and I think that's you know that would might, might seem to be uh, with some justification, but that's not the issue. There's plenty. Plenty of empirical evidence. Nobody is clear. And here we have a guy, Kirk Sowell, an analyst based in Jordan, about whom I know little. He writes Inside Iraqi Politics, and he says, what influence can we have if they think we're supporting the terrorists? There's a good question for the Pentagon. Now, um, I would, again, you've always got to remember, as I constantly stress, that the U.S. government is highly factionalized, highly factionalized. Neocon bandits over here, Obama over here. Um, you've got uh, humanitarian bombers with, uh, with uh, Samantha Power and all these people. Here's, here's one of the things I was considering. Now, this is a kind of a wild hypothesis. But do we remember... Uh, for example, when ISIS came into Iraq and the Iraqi forces melted away, my thesis then and now is that that was because the Saudis had bribed the officers. The U.S. had bribed the Iraqi officers to run away back in 2003, and the Saudis then bribed them uh, last year. The Saudis are in the business of bribery. How about that the Saudis are bribing U.S. commanders or factions inside the military? Now, have you never heard of that before? Well, there's a very um, influential um, kind of landmark novel from the mid uh, middle point of the 20th century. It's called Catch-22. Catch-22 by Joseph Heller is about uh, a guy by the name of Yosarian, but you've got an anti-hero in there who is... Milo Minderbinder. And Milo Minderbinder is theoretically part of the U.S. Army Air Force in North Africa and Italy and places like this. And he creates a syndicate called m, &M Enterprises. And he's all around the Mediterranean. He's buying things on the black market, always cigarettes, tobacco. Um, he does, you know, all kinds of, uh, of deals, right? It's kind of like uh, Trump. But at a certain point, Minderbinder says, well, I'm going to actually uh, – con I'm going to do contract uh, missions for the Germans, for the, for the supposed enemy. And at the Battle of Orvieto, Milo Minderbinder in the novel fights on both sides. Uh, he bombs his own squadron at the airfield at Pianosa in that central Italian area. He orders his fleet to attack the American base where he himself lives, killing many American officers and enlisted men. Then he gets court court marshals for treason, but he's so rich, he, he get, a lawyer gets him off saying that he expresses the, the essence of, uh, of capitalism. So look. It is not unheard of, <laughs> you know, uh, you can look at the Chinese People's Liberation Army, same kind of thing. You can have a criminal enterprise, a criminal syndicate that operates inside an occupying army. Uh, I had a, a dear friend here, a, a lady who had been in uh, General MacArthur's headquarters in Tokyo in the late 1940s, right? This was SCAP. 
uh, and she said people in SCAP were relatively clean, but the word in SCAP was that the SACUR, the U.S. command in Europe, was corrupt and based on thievery. Well, that would be Milo Minderbinder. So I'm wondering whether Milo Minderbinder is commanding any of those units over there, and maybe they're doing it on the side, bribed by the Saudis. Or, if that's not the case, p quite possible, I want to know how far up does that go? I want to know who is ordering these uh, deliveries, because as uh, the think tanker says, you'll never get anywhere if people really think that you're supporting terrorists behind their back. All right, so now, on the ground, Hollande has flown to the Charles de Gaulle aircraft carrier. Uh, Germany is coming in with um, small forces and a humanitarian mission. The British have now voted to come in. Um, people have noted the feckless and rather pathetic performance of Corbyn as the uh, new leader of labor compared to Miliband, who was able to stop the damn thing in its tracks back in September of 2013. Corbyn seems to be a rather uh, ineffective, uh, lackadaisical leader. Corbyn, if you really believe war is bad, why didn't you force people to toe the line and impose factional discipline with your whips, right? the famous whips? Why weren't the whips in action? We'll be back in a minute. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Very full plate. Got to keep moving along. Now, the, the other thing, um, if you take a look at Topley.net uh, as of Saturday, the 5th of uh, December, um, you're probably going to see this interview I did on a Thursday with uh, Press TV. And it had to do with uh, the Iraqi Prime Minister Abadi saying twice this week that he doesn't want U.S. forces or more, he doesn't want U.S. forces to be dictated from Washington. He wants that to be bilateral. In other words, no unilateral diktat of who is going to be sent to Iraq. That's got to be negotiated, right? Sovereignty. And he's absolutely right. Um, now, this comes in response to this Ashton Carter, right, who should be fired, the strange love. He was at the House foreign, uh, the House uh, Armed Services Committee earlier this week, and he announced that he's sending 200 U.S. forces to, uh, to northern Iraq. Now, when I saw that, I said to myself, has he cleared that with Obama, or is he just off the reservation, you know, making it up as he goes along? This question has not been answered. But certainly, uh, Carter, you could see from the way he did it, with the lurid detail, that he was out to embarrass a body. He was trying to provoke something, make trouble, wreck the operation, because Carter is one of those people who wants it to fail so that he can carry out his lunatic notion of a no-fly zone and a safe haven for terrorists in northern Syria, cooperating with Turkey rather than cooperating with the Kurds, Russia, and the Syrian Arab army, which would be the rational policy. And then, after Abadi had already said no, this Colonel Steve Watson, who seems to be uh, also part of this faction, put him down as one of the Camarilla. Steve Watson says, oh, we're going to bring in 200 people. And then Abadi says no again. So I see provocateurs in action. I see insubordination. I see practically treason with these guys. They're trying to provoke a body. They're trying to embarrass a body, as the Washington Post pointed out. A body's in trouble because the U.S. is not doing anything to stop ISIS, as we just heard. So that translates into a political threat to a body. Does Petraeus, do Petraeus and Allen want a body out? They may. Now, here's the other uh, question that um, we've got uh, all of this going on, and... Um, it's time to fire Ashton Carter. That's it. Strange love out. We had one going before. Hashtag fire Allen B four W W three. We'll be using that again uh, in the coming days. So um, I guess that is some overview. Um, Oh, one other. I'm sorry. This is important, too. Um, back on July 28th, we published an epoch-making map of Turkey and Syria. We showed 
the Jarablus Gap. We showed the areas controlled by the Kurds. We showed the Jarablus Gap. We showed the ISIS supply lines coming through there. And that, that map has gone around the world quite a few times. Now, this past week, RT uh, usefully in itself presented the Virginia state senator, um, Senator Richard Black, from Ashburn in Northern Virginia, he had wanted to run against Congressman uh, Frank Wolf's uh, successor, or he wanted to compete for that. He was forced out because of some un unfortunate statements. We'll, we'll leave that aside. But Senator Black came up there and showed you a map which was conceptually identical and graphically almost identical to our map. But the problem is we had our map on July 28th, and now Senator Black had his uh, two days ago. So, uh, RT, we are now four months ahead of you. What is wrong over there? Um, why don't you show these things when they become news rather than when they fit into some preconceived ideological notion, right? Let's provide the service to world public opinion of uh, actually telling the truth in a, a, uh, a timely way. Now, we got to talk about the San Bernardino now, because this is now part of the war hysteria. Um, on NPR this morning, we had another confirmation that these events were taking place in the middle of a drill. Uh, here we go. On the day of the mass shooting in San Bernardino, California, the city's SWAT team was training for an active shooter situation just minutes away from the scene of the massacre. This is National Public Radio this morning, Martin Kasti, K-A-S-T-E. And uh, <laughs> this is like some, some things I have in my 9-11 synthetic terror. They say, we were just working through scenarios when this call went out, says Lieutenant Travis Walker, the SWAT team commander. So they go seamlessly from the drill into the actual uh <laughs> event. We had just finished a training scenario that involved multiple shooters at multiple locations within a small confined area, and then they were off. They didn't get time to change from drill to the actual operation. Now, this had been uh, already revealed here in a publication called the Victor Valley News, Victor Valley, California. Uh, VVC, so Victor Valley College, alerts public to upcoming, quote, active shooter, close quote, training. So this is uh, uh, November 27th, already uh, last week. So Victor Valley College officials would like to inform students and area residents that there will be an active shooter training exercise on the Victor Valley College campus on Monday, November 30th, and there will be significant police presence and part of the campus will be on lockdown. Hey, if you pay intuition to them, you better sue them for this kind of hanky-panky. We call, the Tax Wall Street Party has been calling for the cancellation of all of these so-called domestic security drills with police in military uniforms, tanks with bazookas, and all the rest of it. This is simply crazy. So what do we have? It looks like we've got the classic pattern of the drill goes live. Tell me where I'm wrong. Um, and that seems to be... Uh, what somebody wanted to happen. Now, it's it's highly relevant because we have the two patsies, and I'm calling them patsies. Um, we know about them now. Um, the two people uh, are involved here, and the the question is, they have a um, an armory in their basement, a stockpile of explosives and ammunition, 14 dead, 21 uh, wounded. And so we've got these two people who seem to be completely normal. In other words, if you look at this from the ca from the categories of normal everyday life, we would have to say Syed Rizwan Farouk, right? Farouk, I guess it's like King Farouk, but not quite. Farouk, 28, and Tashfin Malik, Malik from Pakistan, the uh, Farouk born in the U.S. Um, what were they doing? Well... Did they think they were actors in a drill? Did they think they were surveillance role players? Did they think that 
you know, doing these things, having these guns was simply part of play acting so that you'd have props that would be used or maybe if uh, somebody wanted to train going into a safe house of terrorists and you'd find these guns, 